أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my Ramadan series, Understanding Quran with Nafisa. We are looking at Surah An Nisa, and in today's video, we're going to continue from Ayah 80. That's 8 0. All right, Bismillah. Whoever obeys the Messenger has truly obeyed Allah. But whoever turns away, then know that we have not sent you, O Prophet, as a keeper over them. And they say, we obey, but when they leave you, a group of them will spend the night contradicting what they said. Allah records all their schemes. So turn away from them and put your trust in Allah. And Allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs. Do they not then reflect on the Quran? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, they would have certainly found in it many inconsistencies. And when they hear news of security or fear, they publicize it. Had they referred it to the messenger or the authorities, those with sound judgment amongst them would have validated it. Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, you would have followed shaitan, except for a few. So fight in the cause of Allah, O Prophet. You are accountable for none but yourself. Motivate and motivate the believers to fight, so perhaps Allah will curb the disbelievers' might, and Allah is far superior in might and punishment. Whoever intercedes for a good cause will have a share in the reward, and whoever intercedes for an evil cause will have a share in the burden, and Allah is watchful over all things. And when you, uh, and when you are greeted, respond with a better greeting, or at least similar. Surely Allah is a vigilant reckoner of all things. All right, so those are the verses that we're going to be looking at today. And so I'm going right back up to verse 80, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever obeys the messenger has truly obeyed Allah. This is a very profound verse of the Quran to send a message out to those of us who do this thing of, I only follow the Quran, I don't follow the Sunnah. You cannot be following the Quran if you do not follow Sunnah. The two go hand in hand. We are not wiser than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is wise. He is the most wise. He knows the reason why. On top of sending us the Quran, he gave us the messenger. He is wise. We cannot... We cannot think that we are, can be in some way wiser than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the reason why he did that. We needed the book, but we also needed the example. You know, human beings, had we not had prophets who had come down with books, what we would have done is say, yeah, this is all well and good as a book, but it's not applicable and it's not practical to us human beings. We would have said the angels brought down these books and maybe it was easy for the angels to follow this, but we're human beings, we can't follow this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a human example by sending the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and all of the previous prophets down to us so that we can see that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do is doable by a fellow human being. And so if we claim to be true believers, alongside following the Quran, we must also follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did you know that the way in which we pray is actually, was actually demonstrated by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And so some people argue this and say, well, you know, I, I pray in my own way. Everyone has their ways of praying because it doesn't say in the Quran that you should do this action, do that action, that all of it connects to prayer. So I'm just going to pray in my own little way. You cannot be wiser than the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, if you follow the messenger, that you are therefore following Allah's path right? You are obeying Allah. So if the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed in a certain way, that is how we pray. Because he was the perfect example, perfect example for us as human beings. 
okay? So we follow Allah's way. And Allah says, but whoever turns away, then know that we have not sent you, O Prophet, as a keeper over them. Allahu Akbar. Meaning that your job, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is to deliver the message. You are a messenger. You deliver the message. You set the good example. You follow what Allah has wanted you to follow. And you share the information to make sure it gets to as many people as possible. But you are not responsible over them. This is the difference between Christianity and Islam. In Christianity, some believe that because their prophet, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, has come, they believe that he has died for their sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it very clear. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he's not responsible for what you do. You are responsible for what you do. If you do the good deed, it is on your scale. If you do the evil deed, it is on your scale. He is not going to be responsible in terms of our actions. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not going to be responsible for our actions. We are the ones who choose. We choose the good that we do and we choose the evil that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be amongst those who do good. So Allah has cleared the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam of the responsibility of being responsible for what we do. That is our burden to carry and our own blessings to carry if the goodness is if goodness is done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, and they say, we obey, but when they leave you, a group of them will spend a night contradicting what they said. Who are we talking about here again? We're talking about the hypocrites. And so among the signs of a hypocrite is that they say one thing to you, but behind your back, they do something completely in opposition of what they said. So you see someone, they smile and they laugh at you deep in their heart. They hate you. They can't stand, <laughs> they cannot stand your guts. They hate you. But they will laugh at you and, and eat with you and smile with you. Oh, we're with you. And when you talk, they talk as though they're on your side. But as soon as they're with a different group of people, they're saying something completely different. These are the signs of a hypocrite. And hypocrites will end up in hell. Hell is the place for hypocrites because they seek to deceive others, but they don't know that the only one that they deceive is themselves because Allah can see through them completely. Okay? And so Allah says, Allah recalls all their schemes. Allahu Akbar. They go behind you, they scheme behind you. To your face they say something, but behind you they're cooking up something different. Allah says that he is recording all of their plans, their secret plans, their secret scheming. Allah says he is recording it. So Allah says what? To, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and therefore to us. Allah says, turn away from them. Turn away from them and put your trust in Allah. Don't be sad and angry and upset and I, I, I'm going to do this thing back to that person. Don't worry. Allah has it in order. Allah will stand for you where you need him to stand for you. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is that we should do what? We should turn away from the hypocrites. Don't worry. You just turn away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will take over from there. And whilst we're turning away, what should we ensure that we're doing? That we are putting our trust in Allah to know that Allah is going to take care of this for me. Plan all you want to, but I know that Allah will make me victorious over you, O hypocrite. So therefore, we must learn to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, Allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs. Allahu Akbar. This was one of the verses that really stood out to me during my times of challenges. During the times when I was finding life really challenging, I would always hold on to this. And whenever I would make dua or speak to Allah, I would say, Oh Allah, you say that you are sufficient as a trustee of affairs, that we can trust you with our affairs. Oh Allah, this is my situation. I don't know how or what to do. I don't know how this is going to get better, but I am choosing to trust you. It, it felt to me in one of my challenging times, like I was in... They say like, you know, when you're in a dark tunnel, but you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And whilst I felt like I was in this dark tunnel, all I kept saying is, Allah, I don't see the light of, at the end of this tunnel, but I am choosing to trust you. So, oh Allah, help me to trust you. I'm choosing to trust you, so help me to trust you. Challenging times can really be a way for us to connect with the Quran. So if you're going through any difficulty, connect back to the Quran. It will give you so much peace 
and so much happiness. And you find Allah talks about things that you didn't even think he would even mention. And you're like, wow, if I had actually read the Quran, I would have had the solution to my problems long time ago. Right? But we're here and we're getting to understand. And then in verse 82, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do they not then reflect on the Quran? Allahu Akbar, that's what I've just said. Do they not reflect on the Quran? Had it been from any other than Allah, they would have certainly found in its many inconsistencies. Meaning some of the hypocrites at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, they really say they believe, but really they don't. So when they're with their different group of people, with their other fellow hypocrites, they're like, we don't believe in all this stuff that he's saying. How, could, how does he think he's a prophet? Like, they would disagree with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in his face. They acted like they were believers. And Allah says, do they not read the Quran? Had it been from any other person except Allah, if the Prophet was not telling the truth, if the Quran did not come from Allah, they would have found inside of the Quran a lot of inconsistencies. But the Quran is nothing but a perfect book. Perfect complete and perfect and so Allah goes on to say and when they hear news of security or fear so when they hear any news they publicize it they're quick to share news I heard this boom I need to go and tell everybody I heard that I just need to go and blab it out to everyone without doing what without verifying Allah says had they referred it to the messenger or their authorities those with sound judgment among them would have validated it Meaning that when we hear information, be it good or bad, let's try to validate it before we share it. That is a message for myself before it is to any one of you. Let's try to validate information before we share it so we do not fall into becoming of those who publicize possibly wrong information or gossip for that matter. And I know gossip does well because everyone wants to hear a piece of gossip. It sounds good. It's like, just me, just me. What's going on? But gossip is not a thing of righteous women or men. We don't engage or practice in gossip. Other people's lives are their lives. We don't know what's happening in it. And so among the character of righteous believers is that they're good at doing what? Minding their business. Like <laughs> minding our business. Minding your business. So if something isn't your business, you don't get involved. If something has nothing to do with you, you stay in your lane. The character of a good believer, be a man or a woman, is that they do not insert themselves in issues that do not concern them. Oh, did you hear what happened to that sister? Oh, did you hear what happened to that brother? Oh, did you hear, did you hear, did you hear? Like, why? Why? You're opening the, the, the room for gossip. Now you're going to start lying in that conversation because there may be some things that did you hear that you haven't confirmed, but you're feeling the need to have to spread. If we have this thing, we have to learn to pull out of these type of behaviors because these are some of the sins that we commit unknowingly and we end up harming other people's reputation, putting false information out into the world and just creating havoc and creating issues. We have to remember that if we share something that is untrue of someone and we are accusing somebody of doing something we do not have confirmation of, we will suffer the results of what we share. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us towards only sharing that which is confirmed and only sharing that which is good. Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, you would have followed shaitan, except for a few of you. Meaning that so many of us would have fell into the traps and schemes of shaitan, if not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help, except for a few of us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding us. This is not a behavior for us to follow. So we move on. Verse 84, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So fight in the cause of Allah, O Prophet, you are accountable for none but yourself and motivates the believers to fight. So perhaps Allah will curb the disbelievers' might. What does that mean? It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... What does that mean? It means Allah is encouraging the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to motivate the believers to stand up for the cause of Allah, motivating the believers to do good, motivating the believers to go ahead and fight for the cause of Islam so that Islam can prevail over the plans of the devil. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say that and Allah is far superior in might and in punishment. Allah is reminding us of the two sides to him. 
Allah is both merciful, most merciful, Ar-Rahman, most merciful, but he's also and can be severe in punishment. When we don't have that balance right, we get too comfortable. We're like, it's okay, Allah will forgive me. It's okay, Allah will understand. It's okay, Allah is my friend. I do so much good deeds. We're only focusing on the merciful part of Allah. You forget. You forget that Allah can, is also and can be severe in punishment. So whilst we love Allah and we understand his mercy, we have to have a balance and know that if we play, if we play, and we don't take Allah's law seriously. Allah has every right to punish us because he has given us the warning. He has given us the warning. Verse 85, Allah says, whoever intercedes for a good deed will have a share in the reward. And you know, when I make videos that I think will be beneficial and I tell some of you guys to share, for example, this Ramadan series, if you share it, or you share any other valuable piece of information with somebody else that will benefit their lives, benefit them in this dunya and also in the hereafter, you get rewarded. You get a share without taking away from any of my share. Whatever Allah will give me for creating this content is what he will give me. So he will not take away from my, for my blessings, but at the same time, he will give you and reward you blessings for guiding someone to goodness. Allahu Akbar. And so that's how it goes. So good deeds are not only for us to do. If we can do good deeds, we should encourage others to also do good deeds. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the previous verse when he says, and motivates the believers. We should, we should motivate one another to do good and to stay away from evil. And Allah continues to say that whoever intercedes for an evil cause will have a share in the burden. Meaning that if we promote evil, we are going to have the sin. If 50 million people apply that evil, it's not only your evil. You've also got the other 50 million people whom you influence. Their evil is also upon you too. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, especially in this day and age of social media, where it's so easy to just like start sending stuff. I know there was a particular time when people were just dropping these like, these fake um, hadiths about if you say, if you say Allah's names a certain number of times, if you say subhanallah, uh, 1,500 times, something will happen to you. If you receive this message and you don't, you don't send it to 50 other people, something bad is going to happen to you in the next five days. And people were just spreading, <laughs> subhanallah, people were just spreading so much of this nonsense and just sharing it. So obviously someone sees it, they panic. They're like, oh, let me share it to all the people in my contacts. And everyone's just sharing it. And it's nothing but fake hadith. Subhanallah, subhanallah. It's funny, but it's not funny because that, that's a lot of sins to gather up, right? And therefore, it's our responsibility to make sure that we are verifying things as we're sharing them and to ensure that we're doing good and avoiding as much evil as we can. The last verse for today was one that really touched my heart. And again, a beneficial reminder to all of us. And that is that when you are greeted, respond with a better greeting or at least similar. Surely Allah is a vigilant reckoner over all things. What is this verse referring to? The salam. Us greeting one another with the greetings of salam. People just like, oh yeah, it's sunnah, so it's fine. No, it is an instruction from the Quran. And this verse tells you exactly which part of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when we are greeted, we should respond with a better greeting or at least something similar. So if someone says salam to you, you need to say wa alaikum salam back or even better, you can say wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, right? And I know some of you guys might test me and just type it in the comment section. And a lot of the times when I see comments like that and people say salam alaikum to me, I do say it back in real life because I'm very conscious of this verse, okay? So I think today's episode really has summed up the importance of relations that we have with one another in terms of how we treat one another, treating each other well, in terms of enjoying good and forbidding evil. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts in his cause and help us to stay away from that which is evil. Ameen.